Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicholas Joffre. I'm a PhD student at the um, University of Pierre and Marie Curie in uh, Paris, France. And today I will talk to you about the VMKit project, which is an implementation of a Java virtual machine and .NET on top of LVM. So before I, star I start, um, just um, here I'm saying .NET. I should I should actually say a common language infrastructure virtual machine implementation. But since .NET is easier to say, I'll just say .NET. .NET is Microsoft's implementation of the common language infrastructure of virtual machine. So VMKit implementation of, GV and of a JVM and a .NET uh, using the LVM, LVM compiler. So what is VMKit? Um, it's a glue between existi existing virtual machine components. It's a drop-in replacement to Java and .NET, so you can execute your Java applications, your .NET applications using VMKit. Uh, simple, simple. Uh, how to launch it? VMKit uh, dash Java hello world, VMKit dot net uh, dash net hello world dot exe. So if there's one thing you need to remember from this talk, it's this one. VMKit. You you can run your Java apps. You can run your .NET applications with VMKit. The uh, scientific goal for, uh, for VMKit, uh, you know, twofold. First was uh, we can build uh, virtual machines very easily. Uh, by using exi existing VM components. So we didn't want to, to, to implement the JIT. We didn't want to implement the garbage collector. We didn't want to implement the uh, class libraries, uh, for example, the Java long libraries. Uh, we didn't want to implement uh, threads. So if we could use existing v VM components, uh, we could build easily uh, uh, high-level virtual machines such as uh, JVM and .NET virtual machines. Second goal was virtual machine inter interoperability. So what we would like to do is execute uh, different kinds of virtual machines in the same address space. So for example, if you have uh, applications which communicate a lot, you would like to get better performance uh, during communications to put this uh, application in the same address space. So since these, uh, these applications are written in a type safe language, uh, Java or C Sharp, uh, they are isolated and you are sure that once uh, one application will not uh, break another application. But, so that's crazy stuff that I'm working on. Uh, here it's more serious is, talk is about how can we bring the VM back in the LVM uh, name. <laughs> so uh, first I will talk to you about uh, the design of VMKit, then its performance, and finally I will uh, try to answer my uh, low level friend, uh, where is his uh, virtual machine uh, partner. So, VMKit design. VMKit is basically a glue between uh, existing virtual machine components. So, for a uh, just in time compiler, it's using uh, this obscure compiler called uh, VCC, no, sorry, LVM. Um, for the garbage collector, uh, it's using the Bohem garbage collector, which is a uh, conservative garbage collector for uh, uh, C and C++ languages. There's also our own garbage collector that we wrote uh, some years ago, which is uh, a semi-precise garbage collector. Uh, for libraries, uh, we're using existing libraries. Uh, so libraries, I'm, I'm talking about the Java long uh, uh, class file, for example. So uh, for, the for the class libraries for Java, we're using the class pass project. For the, uh, for the .NET uh, virtual machine, we're using either mono uh, implementation or pinet lim implementation. Uh, we, can, we can use both. For threads, we're using the underlying POSIX threads on your machine. And for exception handling, we're relying on this, this time, VCC. So that's VMKit. That's what's going on in VMKit. So uh, VMKit has an internal representation of classes uh, in the case of, uh, of Java. And in the case of, of .NET, it's uh, assemblies. In green, you have the Java uh, side. In, in, uh, in purple, it's the uh, .NET side. So uh, VMKit will convert your JVM bytecode to uh, LVM IR, or you ASM to LVM IR. Uh, VMKit will perform, perform method and field lookup uh, to do lazy compilation and uh, just-in-time uh, class uh, loading. And finally, VMKit is a runtime for, for virtual machines, so 
uh, you can run threads, you can launch threads. Uh, there's a class reflection, um, class reflection, and uh, and uh, execution handling. The execution of VMKit, so you give a, uh, it's it's stand it's standard execution of a, a virtual machine. So you give a a, a file a dot class or a dot jar file, uh, dot exe for a dot next uh, uh, application. VMKit will jit the main function. Uh, so jitting means here. Translating to JVM bytecode to uh, LVM IR. Uh, it will insert stubs for methods uh, call, so that's uh, lazy comp compilation. In the case of Java, there's also there's also uh, lazy uh, class uh, loading, so it will insert stubs also for uh, field accesses. And finally, it will run the main function. So. When the main function will run and, and call the stubs, call stubs, the stubs will call the JIT, give control to VMKit, which will try to load the class and the uh, or the assembly which is defining the method which is which is called, uh, JITing this method and, and return this method so that it could be uh, executed. The JIT in interface between VMKit and uh, LVM, uh, so you can take Nate's, Nate's talk from this morning. Uh, it's a compile-only approach. So um, you give a, a set of optimizations, you compile a method, and you get your uh, and you get your uh, uh, your native uh, uh, code. Uh, one thing that they, Nate didn't mention is that you can also uh, uh, specialize your memory manager. So uh, when you're jitting, you can say uh, where the m you want to. Uh, so you get you can uh, uh, allocate the memory by yourself. Uh, VMKit is doing this for stack unwinding. That's uh, currently uh, something that LVM cannot do. So VMKit provides it. And finally, uh, VMKit provides a uh, custom model uh, provider. So that's the model provider uh, Nate talked about. Uh, this provider will do constant pull uh, in case of Java or assembly lookup to find methods. Um, so all JVM bytecode and all uh, MSIL uh, instructions are expressible in LVM. So there are three cases. First one is one-to-one -one translations. So uh, addis addition, uh, subtractions, arithmetic operations, or, uh, or uh, variables, uh, loads and stores. That's a one-to-one -one translation. So there's, for one bytecode, uh, one LVM uh, instruction. One-to-many translations. Uh, RS stores in Java is like three or four instructions in LVM IR. Uh, virtual calls, so you virtual calls, so you get the virtual uh, table of an object and you do the virtual call.